Well, hello again, my friends. Welcome back to Carpo's Herb Channel. I guess it's a good time to make a couple of videos. It's the middle of the summer, so it's a good time to get back into the herb channel. Um, I generally share specific plants on this channel, but uh, sometimes it's just a generalized thing. I was going to make a video here about four different random plants that uh, I've found very useful, but I decided to make this specific about one, tobacco. Um, the other four, just to name right off, is the Indian pipe, which I, I mentioned this before. I'm, I need to make a separate video about this, but this is the Indian pipe, or ghost plant, that I harvested. You can see it's white and brown, and that's because as the white flowers dry, <laughs> they turn black and shrivel up. It's a really interesting plant, but uh, this can have some, uh, anti, you know, some nervine and antispasmodic and anti-epileptic uh, benefits to it, apparently. And it also helps you with pain. So these can only be harvested in the woods. So I don't really want to include this in my uh, gardening uh, video here, which is really what I wanted to talk about. A few things that you can put in your garden that are interesting. Now, tobacco itself is a fascinating plant. And I know the minute I said tobacco, a lot of people instantly thought about cigarettes and thought, why would you grow tobacco? Tobacco's bad. Smoking's bad. You're right. I smoked for 25 years before I quit and started vaping. I've been vaping for a few years now and eventually I'll quit that. But uh, smoking cigarettes uh, regularly, like a pack a day, is a horrible thing to do. But it it's kind of like if a person says that, well, you know, uh, alcohol is horrible because you could be a drunk or that cannabis is, is horrible because some people sit around smoking pot all day. In smaller amounts, it can be a benefit for some people when they need it. Now, tobacco, it was used ritually before it was used as a, you know, as a regular smoking. In fact, you know, the Turkish in, introduced, you know, the Europeans to the tobacco, but um, there was also wild tobacco, several different species growing in the New World. They just have their own way of making it. So when you hear the term Turkish tobacco, the reason why it's usually darker is because of the way that it's sun-dried, which actually alters the chemistry of the plant. Um, here in the U.S., we grow most of ours out in Virginia way, you know, and uh, it's usually a pretty standard, you know, Virginian tobacco. They've got their own type that they use. But um, the tobacco industry is huge, and they would like you to think that you can't grow your own. And that's the reason I'm making this video is because you can grow your own, and it's completely legal, and there is no place, uh, there's no federal law that says you're not allowed to cultivate tobacco. And this is interesting because, for example, I read an article the other day from Australia where they busted somebody with a million dollars, $1.2 million worth of uh, tobacco, illegal tobacco plants. There's a huge black market over there because nobody's allowed to grow their own tobacco. And so the people who do are breaking the law. Here in the U.S., if it's grown for personal use, as long as you're not selling or trading it, then it's totally legit. The thing that keeps people from wanting to grow tobacco, it's not so much the growing part. They tend to tell you that it's hard to grow. It's not. They're very small seeds. They sprout rather easily. Every year, hundreds pop up in my garden. I mean, I've I've got probably 25, 30 tobacco plants that I did not plant this year because they just continually reseed themselves. And uh, so I actually had, have two different kinds. I'll show you the seeds, what they look like, but I just found this packet I had. And I had two different kinds that I was growing. Havana. And mohawk. If you get up really close here, you can see these seeds are ultra tiny, just like powder almost. Uh, so the Havana, the Cuban tobacco, that's very difficult to grow up here in the Northwest. I've tried and uh, I've been able to grow it, but the mohawk tobacco grows much faster. And that's what I have, uh, or much better out here anyway. And that's what I have drying here. So when you're growing tobacco, if you're growing it for harvesting the leaves, you'll want to pick the flowers off at the top. And right now, I have this little, they haven't sprouted yet, but these little flower bunches, they haven't opened up yet, but once they do, they bloom, and then they turn into seed pods, and there's tens of thousands of seeds per plant. So you never run out of seeds. But it has such an interesting smell. But if you pull the tops off, then the plant continues to produce more leaves. So if you're growing four seed, leave it. If you're growing four leaf, take the flowers off. And it will continue to produce more leaves there's a couple different ways. Some people harvest all the plants at the end of the year, but some people harvest each leaf as it's as it ripens, which is the method that I'm trying since I have a smaller garden. Here's a torn up one, but um, this is a mohawk tobacco leaf I harvested yesterday as kind of a prop to show you. And um, 
the drying part, these will hang here for probably a couple of months. Uh, I'll probably move them to a different area. Right now I'm just stringing them up. But they'll be air drying for, for a couple of months. And after that, they will be uh, cured and the fermented or whatever I choose to do. And for different types of tobacco, um, it can take two to three years for the full process to get really good stuff. If you're curing uh, the Havana tobacco to roll cigars, I mean, each leaf has to be preserved flat, has to be done properly so it can still have enough flexibility to roll into a cigar, but not so much that it's, um, you know, rubbery. Um, and that is a skill, I mean, to be able to make cigars. So I had some tobacco I harvested a couple years ago and it was had been cured but I tossed it recently because I wasn't going to use it. Some of it had molded and it's, it is a little bit of work. But here's the thing, $10 a pack of cigarettes, I'd think that more people would be growing their own tobacco. I mean, it's a grow your own world out there with cannabis. At one time tobacco was affordable of course, but um, you know with the vast amount of taxes they have on there, I would think more people would grow their own. Uh, but they're probably scared of it or think it's illegal or aren't aware of how easy it really is But mostly afraid of the curing part probably so if you started one year then by the next year you could have some tobacco ready and Continue on that process. So basically if you start one year um, You know you might have a continual supply of tobacco forever Now I just say this that's not in most people's interest because most people who smoke probably want to quit smoking eventually and don't want to get into that another reason of growing tobacco it's because if the shit ever hits the fan, pardon the expression, tobacco is going to be an extremely valuable commodity. I mean, I've always been the prepper type. I have dehydrated food, I have a giant water thing for my tub that I can fill up, and I, I like to be prepared for anything that could happen. I want to be self-sufficient so lights go out tomorrow. And having tobacco to barter in a situation like that would be just priceless. But... I haven't even gotten to the main component here, which is that that's just the cigarettes aspect or the smokers aspect. This is ritual tobacco. Okay, so your average tobacco is maybe one to three percent nicotine tops. This stuff here is six to nine percent. It's like I think eight points up to eight point six percent nicotine. This stuff it'll mess you up. It'll kill you if you eat enough of it. I mean, any tobacco would. But I have this book here, which is one of my favorite books. Mm -hmm. The Encyclopedia of <laughs> the Encyclopedia of Psychoactive Plants, Ethnopharmacology and Its Applications. And within this 10-pound book, several hundred pages, there's 20 pages of t tobacco. And it goes on to uh, the one, you know, this is Nicotiana rustica, which is the, it'll have little yellow flowers on it. But there's several different cultivated, you know, uncultivated wild tobaccos, and they all have their own unique characteristics. But I just wanted to read this part here. It says the effects. Um, they described it as what well, says wild tobacco can induce hallucinations, hallucinations that shamans are able to utilize. Wilbert has distinguished the hallucinations wild tobacco produces among the Warao Indians on the basis of their phenomenological effects: dreamlike and chromatic, multicentral perception, brilliant occurrences of light, intuitive knowledge and spontaneous insights, soul escort by a psychopomp. Psychopomp was the ancient Greek uh, person who would take you to the dead. Um, and uh, tunnel experiences. However, such phenomena appear only to initiated shamans. Non-shamans who consume the same amount as shamans do may experience toxic effects that can be life-threatening. And uh, it's just interesting because the, these are ceremonial, you know, uses for a lot of these cultures and um, several different methods. Um, snuff, they make, you know, snuff is like the powder, but they also make this like liquid nicotine snuff kind of stuff that they put in this little stick and go, you know, inhale it, and it's supposed to put them in these trance-like states. Um, so heavier doses, it's not just about the nicotine. That's what I wanted to get to. Um, most people think you smoke for the nicotine, and that's true when you're a smoker. But every type of tobacco has its own constituents. Uh, many compounds that are not as well known, some that are, but tobacco itself, wild tobacco, has over 900 known constituents. Some of those are going to be useful, some of those are going to probably have a synergistic effect with the others. Um, so it's just a fascinating thing to research and to grow. So if you were ever curious about growing tobacco in your garden, 
it's really easy, and you can order seeds from anywhere. Uh, I think the place I got mine, if I'm not mistaken, was Victory Seeds, but that was several years ago. I've been growing it uh, off that same seed batch since then. But I don't take it too seriously. My garden out there is it's doing pretty well, but it's not, of course, meant to feed me all year. My, my whole purpose of, of gardening is to get myself my green thumb up and keep it, you know, keep it functional uh, because I, I feel like something might happen one day. And knowing how to grow your own food is going to be an essential part of that. And if you can grow food along with tobacco and cannabis, which are two very easy things to grow, uh, then you'll always have something to barter with. So those are just my thoughts on it. And hopefully, just for the sake of mentioning cannabis, YouTube doesn't decide to delete my video. You know, I shouldn't even go there, but um, I was going to uh, I was gonna mention Kratom if I was going to go all three of these. You know, Kratom, I live in the Northwest. Growing it up here is very difficult. Even so, the alkaloid content is going to be different than the tropics. You know, the hours and of day and the, the amount of alkaloids, the type of alkaloids. But if you live in the southern U.S., you can actually grow Kratom, too. But uh, even mentioning that, YouTube uh, has two strikes against my account for talking about Kratom. So I feel like even making a video about tobacco, you know, that somehow it's going to be censored or taken off because I'm discussing something that may be dangerous. So I should, should have said at the beginning... Uh, you know, this, this video is for inf informational purposes only, it is my opinion, and it's not to inspire anyone or convince anyone to grow anything or do anything illegal. It's pretty sad a person would have to say that, but it's the world we live in. So, thanks for listening. If you've grown tobacco, let me know how you feel about it and what your experiences have been, what types you've grown. And, um, yeah, that's about it. Talk to y'all later. Have a good one.